Beekeepers, are shims in the center of your hive during winter a good idea? Well, my first hive I bought from Better Bee, and their catalog showed a picture of a shim. And when I bought the hive, the complete hive, I got a shim that went in the center. And by center, I say between the deeps and the medium. And here it is March, and I've started removing shims because the bees will fill this space with wax comb if you don't remove these shims right away. But the advantages of having a shim during winter, I do not put the sugar at the top. I put the sugar here and I put the pollen substitute or pollen patty right here. And last fall, Domino cane sugar was really expensive. I did not do syrup last fall. So I have been giving my colonies extra honey from all the mediums of honey I had last summer up here at the top. So 95% of my colonies moved up to the medium. They are no longer down in the deep. And I have had colonies down here in the deep. And they did not move up to the honey. And they ran out of stores of honey. They ran out of food. One of them, I just found it just in time, was, was chilled. And they didn't go up because there was a space here. And there was too much room in between the medium and the deep. And they did not go up to the honey. So there are disadvantages to having a shim. And there are advantages. Let me show you out here. Okay, the last few days I have been removing the shims from these colonies here. See these shims? And I stick a fuse in the, in the hole. And the ones with a double medium are the ones that needed honey. And I haven't had time to actually, sometimes I take them inside and I will pull out frames that are empty and give them full frames of honey if it's not warm enough outside. But in like five days, five, six days, it's going to be warm enough outside that I can, I can move frames around. And some of the bees, I've noticed the other day, some of them had moved down. So there's actually two mediums full of honey, or not honey, but bees. And there's brood in the top and they've started brooding in the, in the bottom. So I probably won't remove those. And when I do my, my nukes and my splits this spring, I will downsize the hive and make it normal. But have you noticed the commercial beekeepers, when they take their bees to pollinate and they use double, double deeps, they don't use the mediums until they start doing honey. So, so here we go. These right here don't have any shims. I will show you some hives that have shims. Okay, it's in the afternoon now. I've got like three more hours before the rain moves in and the temperatures are in the 40s. And these are the last few outdoor colonies I have that have hives with shims. And I'm removing the domino cane sugar, see? And sometimes the bees aren't, aren't willing to fly. Um, so they get stuck with the sugar if I'm in a hurry. So let me, uh, let me pull this off and what I do is I leave the outer cover on, try not to disturb the cluster as much as possible. I will take the medium and I will set it on another outer cover. I will remove the shim and remove the sugar. And if they need pollen substitute, I give them more pollen substitute. Let me pause this. Okay, this is what it looks like when I take the medium off. The medium is still very honey. I've put sugar in these hives several times during the winter. And you can see the pollen substitute that I put in here. They've actually used some of it. Okay. So, there is an advantage to having the sugar down here. I have an outer cover and inner cover. I don't have a pillow in there. I see some, pe some beekeepers using a pillow. I don't have a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, you don't want to have a lot of headroom in your hive. Because the heat goes up. So, the heat is trapped by this one inch insulation board inside this outer cover so the bees are up there between the where well, they're actually in the medium and they're up here in between the inner cover and the outer cover but i don't want to remove that right now because i want to take this shim out and i'm taking the sugar away let me pause this again all right i've taken this is this is the dot ap23 uh it comes in a bigger piece but i've I've taken a quarter off of that and I will actually tear this in half 
And rather than setting this on top here and squishing your bees when you set that medium on there, I take and I tear this in half and I stick the pieces in between the frames so that when I go to put this medium back on there, I'm not killing a bunch of bees. So far, I'm not seeing a bunch of bees coming out. We'll see where they're at. They're there. But the whole point of doing this is you don't want to disturb the clusters. Let me put this back on here. Okay, I got the medium back on. How many bees are in this colony? Well, there's not a lot, but there's enough. And I don't have to bring them inside. Uh, just out of curiosity. Hey, that's a good sized colony. Wow, I must be doing something right. Okay, so you see that? An inner cover and outer cover. There's no air space. There's not a huge air space. There's no pillow in there to draw the moisture. The moisture goes up. Why the hell would you want a pillow or any kind of insulation in the top of your hive? And we'll see if there's any moisture on the inner cover, I mean the outer cover. See, the moisture has been building up, but I've removed the, out, the shim. If it was a large colony, I'd have a shim in there. But because the colony got small, I took the shim out, and I just have the inner cover and outer cover. There's not a lot of air space there, so the heat won't rise above the bees. It'll stay right there because the bees are not down here. They are from here, the bottom of the medium, to the top of the inner cover, okay? And there's my sugar. Okay, very simple. I've got how many more to do? <laughs> the thing is you wanna get this done before they start building comb in those shims, okay? So uh, again, are there advantages to having a shim in the center of the hive? Yes, there are. I know how big the colony is. If I see bees at the top of the hive and I take this fuse out, I use fuses, I have a lot of fuses, I'm an electrical contractor, and I take an LED flashlight and look in there, do I see the bees? Okay, if the bees are up above the hole, I know they're from here to here. If I see a cluster of bees, you know, a cluster of bees in here taking up the space, and I see bees at the top, I know the cluster goes like this. But do they go down here? Well, then I would... Sometimes you can blow in the bottom of the hive, and you can hear how many bees are in the hive, and you'll know. But I try not to irritate them too much during the winter. So what I do is I uh, use the shim, take an LED flashlight, I look, and I know how big the cluster is. And then, how big around are they? Well, that's something... You look in the hole, how big is a the cluster there? If it's a big cluster there and you see bees at top, you know they're okay. If you don't see any bees down here in this hole and you see a few bees at the top, that's when you actually have to lift the inner cover and look. Okay, this, this what I use is anything smaller than a basketball is in jeopardy of being chilled during the winter. Temperatures near zero. That is larger than a the basketball. They're just fine. So I'll be taking these shims out. And I, I guess I'm going to keep using shims. If I didn't know the size of the cluster, there is a more increased chance that they would get left out when they're really small and get chilled and become a dead out. And that's why I don't have very many dead outs. Okay? Thank you.